Hey everyone, this is a video tutorial on how to use link aggregation for AT&T modems slash ONTs or other ISPs that do not support link aggregation and if you have speeds over 1 gigabit. In this video, I will be using the Firewall of Gold unit as my router slash DHCP server. For the switch, I will be using the Netgear GS110 EMX Manage Plus switch. And lastly, from AT&T, the Nokia BGW-505 unit. Now, it is to my understanding that the BGW320-505 and the BGW320-500 are the same. It is just that the 505 is from the vendor Nokia and the 500 is from Ares. This information is not important as they both run the same firmware and the interface is the same. This goes the same for the BGW210-700. I will first show how to set up IP pass through on the BGW unit. You will need to do this for this configuration to work. If any of you viewing this are outside of AT&T's architecture, you will just need to set up bridge mode or your available equivalent. Now you are first going to go to the BGW's web GUI, or your modem. This is also known as its user interface. The default IP is shown here on this site as 192.168.1.254. I would change this if I were you, and I will explain why later on in the video. You can see here my BGW IPv4 address is 192.168.100.1, and IP pass-through is enabled. IP pass-through address is showing my public IP address. I'm going to keep that covered with my notepad window just so you don't see it, and that's just lazy editing. You're now going to want to go to the firewall window here. Then click IP pass through. You're now going to want to log in using the device's access code. The default access code is found on the back or the bottom of your BGW unit. For those of you outside AT&T, your default password could also just be password or blank. I would recommend to change this for security purposes. If you are outside AT&T, navigate your user interface to find bridge mode and enable it. If you have IP pass through and are outside AT&T, you may want to follow the next steps just to get an idea of what to do. Now after you have logged in, you're going to see here the option for allocation mode. We're going to select pass through. For pass-through mode, you're going to want to select DHCPS-Fixed. This option allows for you to lock on to one MAC address and one MAC address only. You can change this later at any time. Then for pass-through fixed MAC address, you will click Choose from List. Then choose your router. Here's my Firewall of Gold unit. Now, you don't want people knowing this MAC address for security purposes, especially for this configuration. So I will be changing this for me before publishing this video. For me, I have a firewall of gold. When creating a WAN connection, I simply generate my own MAC address that the firewall will emit to the BGW unit. You will want to do this as well if you have a firewall of gold, as when using link aggregation, it can be confusing as to which MAC address the BGW unit will see. Lastly, for this IP pass-through step, for the IP pass-through DHCP lease, you will want to input the maximum as shown here. That would be 99 days, the rest is zero. You will now press save and we will move on to the next step. Now this next part is optional, but you may not want to skip it. I will show you how to change the device IP address for the BGW unit. You may want to do the same if you are outside of AT&T's network, if it's possible. The reason I recommend doing this is so the subnet for your network has a minimum confusion. With too much or even a little confusion, your network's topology may be inefficient and DNS resolving may be slow. You're going to want to navigate to home network, then click subnets and DHCP. Under private LAN subnet here lies the device IPv4 address. For me, I inputted 192.168.100.1 as this is easier to remember and outside the subnet you will most likely be using. Now, before you press save, you are going to want to go lower to DHCP server. Make sure it's left on. For some reason, it is required for IP pass to work. 
Now for DHCP address, make sure to change it to be under the subnet of 192.168.100.1 or whatever address you have used. Or you can also just copy the options that I have used. You can ignore everything else on the page. Now press save and we'll move on to the next. Alright, so here's just a quick overview of my configuration. My fiber cable comes in through the wall, goes through that fiber jack right there, and is converted over CAT6 back into a cable through my BGW320-505 unit by Nokia. And now on the back of the unit from at and the Nokia again, it will have a five gigabit cable going in from the fiber jack here, and it's gonna go out through the single five gigabit cable right here. That five gigabit connection goes in through the 10 gigabit port right here. See, here's my WAN. This is the patch panel right here. It's being connected on the other side. Now this right here is the GS110 EMX switch by Netgear. It is a smart switch, layer one plus. It's, I'm just gonna say layer two switch. It supports link aggregation though with these two 10 gigabit connections here and then the eight one gigabits. I'm blanking these off because I do not want any of my other roommates to come in, just plug something in there, but they can on any one of these ones. This is the M100-50G. It has, uh, I believe, 48 one gigabit ports for RJ45, and then here's two SFP. These are not SFP+. Now, the reason for my configuration, the reason for this video is this unit right here, all of AT&T's fiber modems, ONTs, they do not support link aggregation over LACP or static. In my firewall here, it only has one gigabit ports on each one, but it does support link aggregation. The media will be converted coming in through this switch and it will be lagged together through the firewall. This firewall unit is a router plus firewall duo. So we're going to be calling the GS110 EMX little switch because no one wants to be calling that long name. So the connection will be coming in through the WAN port into port number 10 of little switch. Next, it'll be going from ports three and four of little switch into ports three and four again on the firewall because this little sign right here, the yellow port is usually indicated as the WAN port. I know I'm using both, you can honestly pick any ones on the firewall. It'll work just as fine. This is just to be easier. So the WAN goes in here, ports three and four, and we'll be coming out of ports one and two into ports one and two onto little switch. Little switch will then be putting this connection being lagged together onto big switch, the M100-50G, and will be distributed to any number of these. Additionally, coming out of little switch, this is another 10 gigabit port, We'll be making a trip down to the access point. This access point will be replaced soon with a Ubiquiti Enterprise A6 access point. Now with the Ubiquiti access point, the Enterprise access point will support a 2.5 gigabit link and it will have a Wi-Fi 6E connection to support the 6 gigahertz bandwidth. Now personally, this switch is all I need, but what if I wanted to upgrade my internet service provider to the 5 gigabit? The 5 gigabit is supported by AT&T in my neighborhood. I want to upgrade that soon, but I would need the Firewall Gold Plus, which would have 2.5 gigabit ports, four of them. I would also need to be upgrading Little Switch to a faster switch with more 2.5 gigabit ports. I do have one in mind. I will put in the video description. Now, let's hop onto the VLAN so we can visualize things here. Little switch will be segmenting everything here. We will have VLAN 69 is what I chose to be selected for port number 10 and ports three and four. Three and fours are lagged together. This will be lag group one. Remember that these are untagged for lag group one. That is so nothing, no routers from the outside world will be putting my devices into the subnets and it will not be compromising anything on my network. So the untagged 
VLAN 69 will be going into ports 3 and 4 of Firewalla. This is lag group 1 on the Firewalla as well. Firewalla will then manage and view all the packets, filter them through, block any connections that are malicious, any outgoing and incoming connections. Now, two LANs will be coming out of the Firewalla, even though it's one connection. LAN 1 will be my wired LAN, that is VLAN 1. And for LAN 2, that would be going to the access point. I do not want the wireless connections to be accessing devices such as my PC or my network attached storage, a NAS. So I will be segmenting those as well. LAN 2 will be VLAN number 5 for me. VLANs 1 and 5 will be coming out of here onto Little Switch. So then VLAN number 1 going to all the wire devices will be coming out of ports 5 and 6 of Little Switch onto Big Switch. This is link aggregation. This will be lag group number 2 on Little Switch. They will then go into Big Switch. Big Switch is lag group number 1, but that will not be part of the video. Now for all my wire devices will be coming out of Big Switch to the Apple TV and the TV, which happen to be right here. And three bedrooms, I have them all wired throughout the house. They will be going in through over there. Now remember, the ports right here, they could be tagged as they're going to another switch, but for that, I would need to set up the VLAN number one on big switch. They're not set up. I do not have a reason to be doing that right now, but you can if you want to. And VLAN number five for the wireless LAN will be coming out port number nine and going into the patch panel for access point. That patch happens to be coming right here. Again, this is only temporary. I don't recommend this, but hey, it works. If you have an access point that can manage VLANs, you can be tagging this port, but for me, I will have VLAN number five and VLAN number one untagged from the egress of Little Switch. I have so much love for the Firewall unit right here. I bought it about a year ago and I have no complaints. I do want to note to everyone that I am not affiliated with Firewalla in any way. I just love their products and I love my gold right here, keeping my home safe. Now, back to my computer. I will show on my Switch's user interface how we are going to configure the VLANs, and I will show the VLANs you will need to use on the router itself later. You will want to connect to the Switch by inputting its IP address into your browser. I will again be using a custom DNS record a feature of Firewalla. You can find your device's IP address in the device list available on your router. This will be found in the app or the web GUI for your router. To find your router's IP address, you will open Windows Command or Equivalent. You will then type in IP config. You will scroll up until you find default gateway. Here it is. After you have found the IP address for your switch, bring it up and log in. The default password may be either password or be left blank. You can also find the default password inside the documentation for your device. Assuming you already have a lag connection for the LAN, you can skip this next step. If not, watch here how to create a connection. Navigate firstly on your switch to your lag groups. For my little switch here, it's on the first page. I would label these for future references. Now here is the lag group for my LAN to my router, the firewall I hold, using ports 1 and 2 lag together. Here again is a lag group to the firewall I gold, but for the WAN connection, what you're all here for. This group is using ports 3 and 4. My last lag group is to big switch, the M4100-50G. This is for all wired LAN devices. Now. Go to lag membership. Group the ports together if your desire. Go back to configuration and change from admin mode for the lag group you just made from disable to enable. This activates the lag group. If your devices support LACP, make sure it is on LACP and not static or vice versa. Press apply. Your switch may go offline, but this is totally normal. Next, do the same steps for your router. Now, do these steps again, but for the WAN ports of your desire. Come back to see if the lag is up or down. Refresh if needed.
If it is down for too long, do some tinkering and maybe check your device's documentation for the exact steps on how to create lag groups. Now, after those are all done and final, let's navigate to VLAN and go to 802.1Q. Go to Advanced, and if it is not yet enabled, enable it. Now let's click VLAN Configuration. VLAN 1 is for all wired LAN devices. VLAN 5 is for LAN devices that are wireless. This is being used for the access point. This is totally optional. And for WAN, I'm using VLAN 69. I don't know. I thought it was a pretty nice number. Now, go to VLAN Membership. VLAN 69, or WAN, uncheck all ports besides the lag group for your router and the link for the modem ONT or BGW units. Make sure the selected ones for this are all untagged. It will show a U. Press apply. It may ask you to change the PVIDs first. I will show you all of my PVIDs so you don't get lost. Go now to VLAN 1's membership and uncheck all that VLAN 69 was using. Tag the ports to your router. Do not skip the PVIDs, they are important. I will show them once again. VLAN 5 is the access point I want segmented. Here is the configuration. If your AP supports VLANs, change from untagged to tagged. On your router, configure the VLANs to align with the ports and VLAN setup on the switch. Here in my Firewalla app, I will go to Networks, then Network Manager. I have configured the VLANs and lag groups appropriately. Now, keep in mind, you may also want to note that all VLAN enabled ports coming out of the Firewalla unit are tagged ports. It is assumed that you are plugging a switch into these VLAN ports. For the WAN connection, if you are using IP pass-through, Make sure your DNS resolver is set to whatever was configured to be the IP for the modem slash ONT, as shown here. Remember, for me, I used 192.168.100.1 for the BGW unit. Here now is a diagram of my network. You can follow this closely to catch anything you may have missed. I will be leaving a link to a bigger picture of the diagram and links to all the products I am using and recommend in the description below. Please note the Amazon links may be affiliate links. Though this does not affect you in any way, I will still be getting a small percentage of the purchase if you do use these links. If you have found this information useful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or concerns or any thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. That's all for this video. Let me know if I should make any more highly specific network tutorials. You have a great one.